all set. I'm all set. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would you please join me in a pledge of the, a pledge of the flag and then remain standing for a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please keep in your thoughts this evening the men and women protecting us around the world. Okay, thank you. If you could, could you call the roll for the purpose of attendance, please? Ms. Fitzgerald? Here. Ms. Disla? Uh, present. Mr. Hayden? Mr. Cirillo? Ms. Mommel? Present. Mr. Lamontagne? Here. Okay, uh, minutes from February 14th. The Chair would appreciate a motion. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? <clears throat> Can you call the roll, please? Can you have a moment? Ms. Mommel? Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Ms. Disla? Yes. Mr. Hatem? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Mr. Lamontagne? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. DiStefano, uh, cash balance report, please. Sure, cash balance report as of February 27th, 2023. The account balance on February 7th was 1,873,229.03. We had deposits from the 8th to the 27th of 4,167,489.76. Uh, less payroll on February 16th of 1,088,652.72. And warrant number 33 on February uh, 14th of 581-985-49 leaves us with a book balance on February 27, 2023 of 4370080 spot 58 and corresponding bank balance on the same day of 2,519-618-92. In our MMDT account, uh, year-to-date interest of 172,131 spot 79 um, and a beginning balance of 9,331,372.43 leaves us with a, a balance of 9,503,504 spot 22 uh, interest for February has not posted yet because it was the 27th and we have a total operating cash balance of 13 million eight seventy three five eighty four spot eighty. Chair would appreciate a motion, please. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, so I've printed this presentation you have it in front of you, as well as the um, supporting DESE information straight from the website. Um, but this is just a high-level overview of what our fiscal year 24 budget is going to look like. Um, and this is um, it's just a summary, so I'm planning to have the complete budget book at our next meeting, which will have all the underlying details that go along with this. Um, so whenever I present a budget, I think it's really important to start out with what the budget process is. Um, it's how we get to our line item budget. Um, at GLTS, this process starts in September, really, when we bring the budget calendar to school committee. Um, and then it starts with the planning phase, where the lead teachers really um, lead the charge. And each lead teacher in each department is looking at what their current year budgets are, what their past expenses were, 
um, and they're looking for trends and you know trying to determine what the needs are for next year and um, then once they once they get all that information they load it into our financial system and it's sort of an ongoing process of review and analysis kind of at the same time um, <clears throat> but we take all of that information and we start to have meetings with the whole leadership team where we go through each line item line by line and we're looking at um, what the budgets are again and we're taking into consideration some of the things that came out of advisory meetings and we're making revisions as we go and then it's just using historical data and state guidelines to try to make the most informed decisions for our future needs and then we bring that whole budget um, to you as a district committee and to the superintendent for approval and then that becomes our line item budget So if we're looking at fiscal year 24, the biggest um, budget drivers are definitely our COLAs, cost of living, um, for all the new contracts that we settled. We're looking at adding some positions to staffing. <coughs> we're looking at a 1.0 MTSS coordinator, a data specialist, which is a current position that we have, but it's been unfilled this year, so we're going to add that back for next year. A freshman academy administrator, a dental teacher, and then we're adding additional positions for co-op students. We also have three new programs coming online, aviation, childcare, and programming and web design. And then we also had a large increase in our transportation contract, which you all saw at the last meeting, um, continuing increase in costs in health insurance, and we're still continuing to upgrade the building and make renovations. So this is a roll-up of our preliminary foundation expense budget. Um, these function numbers correlate to the DESE chart of accounts. Um, so basically, we're looking at, if you look at the bottom of this, our total foundation budget for fiscal year 24 is $43,068,009, which is a little over a $4 million increase from the year before. That number represents our net school spending amount, so we are required to spend that amount of money on educating our students. What I think is interesting when you look at this is that almost $3 million of our increase is going straight to instruction, um, and that's all instructional costs, not just salaries, but your teacher salaries are in there, but also all of the equipment and supplies that, that go along straight to instruction. I always like to look at the budget um, in terms of our salary expenses and our non-salary expenses. So this is sort of a visual that shows you that about 55% of our budget is strictly salary expense, and then 15% is employee insurance and OPEB, which are also sort of salary-related expenses. 29% uh, of our budget is non-salary expenses, and then we have a small 1% of our budget going towards debt right now. So our non-foundation expenses, um, these are our transportation costs, our OPEB costs, these are um, capital projects, as well as long-term debt. Yep. Um, we're looking at a little over a $1.5 million increase on these items, which would give us a total estimated fiscal year 24 budget of $47,694,962. So when we, when we look at this, we need to consider how, how our budget is funded. Um, and one of the key components of how our Chapter 70 funding is allocated is based on enrollment. So this is just a visual of enrollment by town. So you can see the increase or decrease per town um, from fiscal year 23 to fiscal year 24. So Andover had a 0% increase, Lawrence is down 31 students, Methuen has an increase of 59 students, and North Andover is up two students. And then when we look at our total student population, 3% of our students are from Andover, 71% of students from Lawrence, 24% from Methuen, and 2% from North Andover. So this is a breakdown of our general fund revenue, which is how our line item budget is funded. So in fiscal year 24, 
um, we're looking at, and this correlates directly to the handout that you have from Desi, the two-page um, format. So our fiscal year 24 estimate right now is um, $35,549,375. And the towns have a required local contribution of $7,518,634, which brings us to a required net school spending of $43,000,000. $68,009. That makes up our foundation budget when you look at the line item budget. Um, and then if you keep going down, we have a regional transportation reimbursement, which is estimated at $1,153,208. And then we're looking for an additional local contribution from the, c the cities and towns of $3,473,745. Again, for a total general fund revenue of $47,694,962, which corresponds to the expenses that we just looked at. This is just a visual of our funding sources. So 75% of our budget is funded directly from Chapter 70 funding, which comes straight from the state. 16% is the required local contributions from the cities and towns. We're looking for an additional 7% from the towns to get the additional local contribution. And then there's a small 2%, which is our transportation reimbursement. Good question. This is for Cheryl. I don't know if you want to hold all questions to the end, but I'm interested in what we are looking to fund with the additional local contribution of 7% increase there. Yep. So that money um, funds our transportation, our OPIP costs, the capital projects, um, and that, that's it. Good answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> So this is just a breakdown of the revenue assessments by town. So this is what each um, each town can be expecting to pay for fiscal year 24. So again, the required minimum contributions um, per town are based on that percentage that I showed you in the beginning on enrollment. Um, Andover is looking at just over a million dollars. Lawrence is looking at just over 1.4 million dollars. Methuen is a little bit over 4 million, and North Andover comes in at six. $765,238. Then we have our non-foundation assessment. Um, so here we look at what our um, transportation costs are, the OPEB, the capital, I'm sorry, the long-term debt is in there as well. Okay. <laughs> um, and we take off the regional school transportation reimbursement um, to come up with our additional local contribution. Um, so Andover is looking at 106 thousand five hundred and sixty nine dollars Lawrence is two million four hundred and sixty one thousand three hundred and thirty eight dollars Methuen comes in at eight hundred and twenty seven nine sixty and North Andover is seventy seven thousand eight seventy seven um, so the total additional local contribution or the total local contribution both required and additional is ten million nine hundred and ninety two thousand three hundred and seventy nine dollars um, so that's really just a high-level um, overview of what our expenses are going to look like and how we're going to fund those expenses. Are there any questions? Any questions? This is for At what point do we notify the um, four sending communities of what their anticipated increase are going to, is going to be? So I think when we go to the towns to present the budget, um, we'll be presenting this to them. The required minimum contribution, they have to pay that. Um, and then we'll be explaining the additional. I, I guess I'm just thinking that each of our cities and towns are already working on their budget. So um, I wouldn't want to wait till May at town meeting to ask for more money since the budget is already there for the vote. No. So we'll have, we'll have the budget book completed for the next school committee meeting, and then that'll go straight out to the town, so they'll have the information before that. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Yes, sir. Mr. Thank you, Leo. Um, 
Can we make sure that somebody goes to Methuen? I mean, that one of the biggest complaints I get that there's no representation from GLTS at budget time to talk about the budget. Yeah. I'll move the recommendation. Yeah. Um, I thought it was just a summary. Are we voting on this to accept move it through, to accept it? So this is really a high level summary, but this is what our budget is going to look like. The budget book will just have a lot more information in it for you. And there'll be a final vote then. Okay. Any further? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, okay, Superintendent, uh, concussion policy. This will need to be voted on, ladies and gentlemen. We have, uh, you should have your microphone, Joe. Please. Should have you packet up a uh, the concussion policy that was revised, um, originally created in 2018, and just uh, recently revised for you to review. And um, if you have any questions, I ask Nari to come to the meeting tonight to answer any questions you may have regarding the policy. Uh, you may, if you want to take more time over the next few weeks and then our next meeting, uh, uh, we can put it back on if you feel like you need more time because uh, you've only had it since uh, last Friday. You got, I think you received this in your packet last Friday. If you haven't had a chance to review it, would like to wait till the next meeting, we can do that. Questions and comments? Yes, uh, Zoila, sorry. Is this, is this a revised? It is revised from 2018. So 2018 was the last time it was revised. Yes. Uh, yes. So this is what we have currently. Oh, well, not this one. But yep, this is exactly. So how do we know what the changes are? Is there any changes different from the 2018 one? Yeah. So the, the uh, I can, now do you know if we've made a lot of changes? In, the, in section two, there has been no, no changes. There has been no changes to the law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Section two, Sorry about that. Um, section two has not been changed because the law in the state of Massachusetts has not changed at all. The only thing we did was we cleaned it up and took out a lot of the repetition because it kept saying the same thing over and over and over again. So we just cleaned it up and just made it look better. Section one, however, we did add because we did not, we didn't really have a concussion policy for within the school during the school day. Section two is more for athletics, and that's what this whole document was for, is basically for extracurricular activities. But um, section one is just written, we put it kind of together on school day policies and procedures for the teachers, um, because a lot of people don't really know, and we felt that since we were putting it in, we would just add it, and um, it actually makes it read pretty well, I think. Um, we've been working on it since, since September, and um, everybody, you know, the doctor and the nurse practitioners and everybody, um, we've all come to an agreement with this. So they all weighed in on it. So are you saying that sec uh, the aspect of the um, concussion policy, section one is the main change? Yeah, we added that. And section two is pretty much similar to what was in the last um, guideline, yep. in the last policy? Correct. We just okay. added. We just changed it around a little bit so it actually read better because before it kept saying, you know, they have to have their a physical. So we just kind of made it more um, easier to read and understand. Okay. You but, all said so. I'm sorry. My name. 
Uh, I'm Nairi Melkonian, and I'm the athletic trainer. You all set, Sola? You all set? Mr. Hatem? Nari, this is not state language. This is all our policy. It's, it's not the state language, um, but it's, how do I put it? It is the state language, but it's written that you can actually read it. It's, it's the policy like on yeah, we just adapted it to our school um, and what we do. Because, like, on page 10, it talks about physicals and the MIA rule and, and things like that. It was all over the place. So we just kind of put it together to make it look a little bit better, the return to play guidelines. Um, these are all state, the return, like, the return to play guidelines are the state return to play guidelines. Um, some of it is some of their words. Some of it is um, made for other people to understand, the layperson to understand a little bit better than um, just us as the medical people. Um, and you're happy with all of this language? Is there anything we should be concerned about as far as legalities? Did you check in on that? Anything we've changed? Um, in the section two that we, I th we, um, we worked with the school um, physician who does a lot of, who is big on the concussions and all that information. Um, she's very up to, up to date on it. Um, there was kind of some concerns at one point is this document and the state law has been in effect since 2010. However, concussion and how you treat and how you um, return kids um, to play has changed over the last 13 years. So the problem is, is we have a 2010 document, but the knowledge and how to treat the patients have changed a little bit. So we kind of went back and forth with that. but. We can only do what the state, I can only do what the state law tells me what I can and cannot do. So. You also. Thank you. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Yes, I'd like to, um, I guess, piggyback on to Tom's question about the legality. Um, I'm pretty sure that each coach and official that is here in the school um, has to take the mandated concussion course, show that they've passed it, produce a certificate so my question on the legality is um, that is totally covered under our uh, what we do for our athletes but now we are adding this on for the everyday school life shops academics whatever um, extracurricular activities but we are not mandating that those are is it, it will be mandated that every teacher has to pass a concussion course um, because that, for me, that's a conflict. If we're saying it's vitally important that we have it over here, but if we don't require it over here, then um, is that a conflict? So, oh, sorry. Did you want to answer that, Superintendent? Sorry. Well, right now we don't have a policy that states that the staff needs to take a concussion. Um, exam or get certified in that it's not uh, that's not to say that we won't look at it and see if that's something we should do because this is new uh, I have had no discussions with anybody in the school at this point so at this time until we get a chance to discuss it and then I'll bring it back to the committee once I have a chance to, d to review this myself more thoroughly thoroughly and sit down with the principal to make some decisions and then we'll get back to you the other thing I want to just say that and I would say to Nari, the, the main question is, 
does the policy align to state regulations? Are we aligned to that? And if we are, that's the key and what's most critical. And so if we've done that, I, I feel good about that. I think the specifics about who we are, the language may be specific to Gray Lawrence Tech, but everything we've done and the communication and the, and the writing of the policy was done in a way that aligns to what the state says we have to al align it to, so we're following all state regulations and policies. This is for show. Yes, I, I totally agree that the policy, especially regarding the athletic part that was pre since uh, 2018, that that is totally in line. But my question is, if we're now adding this other part and not getting a ruling either from attorney or whatever else, so you're give, setting one set of standards for the athletic component and another set of standards for the day-to-day -day thing. And I'm not, I, I'm thinking, well, I shouldn't be holding this up. I'm thinking that I feel good about the fact that we're doing it. My concern is, are we saying there are two different standards and has our attorney looked at this as a policy? Because I wouldn't want to vote on it until that had happened. Our, Any, uh, yeah, our, far as I'm aware, our attorney has not looked at it as a policy. And uh, in terms of a certification of our staff, uh, I don't know if that's a state requirement or state law or not uh, that they have to do that. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't have a policy that requires that. So that would be something I would bring to the committee if the committees would like to see that as part of a policy. They certainly can uh, require that. You all set, Marilyn? Um, yes, I Are you? Here. I'm sorry? So, I, I know so, the so principal ha wanted to make a point, so I'd like to have her before I make one final comment. I think I've been misunderstood in what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm sure you have. <laughs> yes, uh, I have one second, uh, Frank. Yeah, uh, Principal Solinsky? I just wanted to add on to what Superintendent Lavoy said, since we haven't had the actual policy um, in terms of like in the day what happens um, one of the things that certainly would be considered is uh, in the beginning of onboarding like we have the arc ed pro platform now which has all of the training materials and so um, there hasn't been discussions in terms of teachers actually taking the same trainings as say a coach but definitely something would be put in our training platform and our acknowledgement of policy platforms in terms of like every teacher and every staff member knows what the procedure is. And so it could be, um, maybe we could find a quick video in terms of like what it is. Um, because if you actually look at the actual procedure for the day, the first thing you do is call the nurse, right? Because we have professionals in the building like NIRI for Athletics and our nurses. We're not looking for our educators to start to diagnose, but um, we have had a few We've had a few incidents that have occurred during the day, and I think too, just making it making um, the staff more aware what of to what for. to look for. So I think that um, you know the superintendent and I, and I think you know having it look for, but it would definitely be something because it could be that a, a, a teacher, like on any given day, if they're not a coach, they might not even. We want to make sure that they are aware that we have added this section so all staff members should know that we have this in the staff section. So once it's moved forward, I would work with Janice to um, integrate a component into our onboarding. Um, again, I'm not sure of whether or not actually going through the full training because they wouldn't be treating anyone, but actually just at least having them acknowledge that they know what the procedures are, if that helps. Mrs. Fitzgerald, you want to conclude? No. Um, oh, you're all set. Mr. Yes, Nari, sorry. I just wanted to add, um, in the rules and regulations of the state, it only requires, um, coach. all coaches are required for CPR and they have to do the concussion training. It doesn't have, it doesn't state anything about teachers um, having to do that. As well as um, the principal, um, Zelensky said that the, you know the nurses are in the building. Um, there is a section that I will let everybody know of um, 
it's called return to learn and it's what the teachers have to ex or what teachers are expected to monitor the children in their classrooms um, getting back into um, at academics because academics comes first before the sports come so there is a section of that it's called return to learn that is in part of um, it is stated in the, the law but it's not um, uh, it's it's in there but it, um, it that's about the only part that I believe the teachers are aware of. Mr. Cervello, you had a question? Yeah. Um, first and foremost, thank you for adding um, part one because, as you know, winter is here and people do fall and kids, or even after walking down the hallway, somebody can slip and fall and bang their heads. So this is a good thing, my thing. Um, and to Marilyn's point, yeah, there, there are some legalities and stuff that we need to look at, but I believe that if a student falls, the first person that should be called is the nurses station, the nurses and their medical professional before having our teachers diagnose our, our children. <coughs> uh, with that, I will need time to dissect this, and I would have preferred a copy of the state guidelines to compare the two sections. Um, but that's not that difficult to find. But I, for me, I, I wanted to at least next time to the next meeting to to um, look it over and compare. Anything further? This time the chair accept the motion to table this matter till uh, the meeting of the 28th. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Only thing I would ask, if you do have uh, questions that do come up, if you could uh, send them to uh, contact the administration so maybe we don't have to have Nari come back again just to approve this. If you have any major questions, that will, or to the principal's office, okay. And if I'm sure that if she has to, you know, it could, that can be arranged also. But it might be nice to uh, not have to inconvenience her to come back. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, the chair would appreciate uh, you put them on the table, matters, please, for next time. Okay. Uh, at this time, the chair would appreciate a motion to adjust the agenda to. To the Little Reggie's Handbook, Ms. Carpenter is here, the director, to uh, along with the superintendent to explain it. Do you have a motion, please? Uh, All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Superintendent? Uh, you, you, uh, you see the copy of the Little Reggie's yeah. Handbook for, uh, yeah. looking to open uh, our child care center next Monday, uh, March 13th. Um, and as part of oops I'm sorry as part of the uh, uh, before we open the uh, facility we would like a, a vote from the school committee on the handbook so we can implement them and uh, ensure that parents have a copy of this uh, who are going to be enrolling their uh, child into the program so if you uh, if had a chance to look at it uh, and have any questions I think you've had a preliminary copy of this provisional copy earlier I think we did we, we gave to you earlier so uh, this is just a finished document so if there are any additional questions you have um, I asked uh, Brandy to come this, this evening to answer any questions you may have specific to the document I have a motion to uh, accept this document so move a second, second. Uh, Vivian my apologies for missing last meeting, so I'm not sure if I'm going to repeat a question that was already answered. Um, was this handbook modeled by another organization or any other handbook that um, that belongs to another agency, child care agency? Hi, I'd be happy to answer that. So the, the handbook is um, modeled through the uh, Department of Early Education and Care's guidelines and policies that are required to be in here. So the language is developed based on those policies for um, the individual program that it's representing. Uh, yeah, I will, I just, I don't know if Vivian's done. Oh, okay, one more. Uh, sure, that's all. And does that also include like the, the late fees and um, the, the tuition? Is, oh, it's not on my Jeez. Does that also include like the late fees and the tuition costs? Um, is that like we created that or is that also modeled? Uh, 
the you the late you? fees and the tuition. Well, I'll take them out of uh, uh, individually. The late fees. Um, those are common industry standard practices of the ones that I developed to put into the handbook. If you'd like to change them, you know, that's fine. But these are the norm things that are charged. Um, the tuition I did create based on enrollment and staffing to try to balance each other and cover the cost of the employment for the daycare. Yep. Uh, Mr. Cirillo? Hi. Actually, name and title for, because I don't know who you Brandy Carpenter, Director of uh, Child Care. Brandy, thank you for coming and thank you for your work. Um, and I was looking at, uh, over the, the handbook, I think is it's very interesting. Um, it is a lot lower than most places I, I've seen, um, but which is good. So I want to uh, commend you and I took a quick little tour of facilities the other day, which I know a lot of people are going to be jealous. Uh, thank you for coming and thank you for putting this together. You're welcome. So thank you. Mrs. Uh, Fitzgerald? Yes, this would be more of a school committee thing. This is the handbook that we are being asked to adopt, but normally we would be adopting something as a policy. Um, so the, which, hand, the handbook we're asking to be adopted this evening. Okay, not as a policy, but as the handbook. Mm -hmm. And do we have a policy for our child care center? Superintendent, you're up. We, we, haven't, we have not at this point taken uh, the handbook and developed it into a policy yet. We will be doing that moving forward. But in order to get the facility up and running, um, I felt like we needed to get this in place so people had something to that we had some kind of regulations or expectations uh, for um, anyone that's going to enroll their uh, son or daughter into the program. Mrs. Fitzgerald? One last thing, my same old question, have our uh, district attorneys um, reviewed this? The attorneys haven't reviewed this because um, wanted to take the time to look at how we would transition this into policies and then forward the policies to the attorney at that time. Anything further? Anyone? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you very much and good luck. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, that's okay. Um, when is um, the opening? I think John you had said that. John. The uh, opening is Monday, uh, the 13th of March, uh, Thursday, uh, from 2:15 to 3:30. We have an open house for the staff uh, to come and visit the fa uh, the facility, tour it. So, committees, any of the committee members who would like to do that's welcome or we could do a tour quickly at the end of today's meeting if you'd like to take a tour of the space tonight. We when can do that. Thursday, the open house? Thursday from 2.15 to 3.30. Thursday. This coming Thursday. Not this week, next week. This week. This week. This week, this week, this week just, so that, just so any staff member who um, child is coming on Monday gets a chance to look at it before they bring them in. All right. Okay, Mr. Hatem. Do we have any no, we early don't. applicants, and how many do we have? Thank you for asking. Um, currently, I have um, a, an interest list, which I started the first day that I came on board here, so that I had um, an idea of who was interested. And based on that interest list, uh, we would be fully um, enrolled for September. And um, probably about 80% enrolled starting probably in April. When you say based on, that's not the people who have actually signed on. How many do we have actually signed up for when you open up? Um, I don't have anyone actually signed up because I didn't have a start date. So now that I have a start date, what I can do is take that interest list, tell them that they are now able to enroll, and then we can move forward from there. Vivian, would you have a question? No. Yes, Superintendent. So we didn't have a start date till today because we 
uh, where the state inspectors was inspected by the state today and so until we knew it was going to pass we couldn't have a start date so uh, there was two items they want uh, uh, resolved which we're doing tomorrow which is putting a fence up in the ch in the um, playground area and putting in a dishwasher in the day uh, in the infant room which both those things we're doing tomorrow so then uh, she's going to come back Thursday and if those are all set then we're ready to go on Monday which we know they'll be all set so we're letting staff know tomorrow um, but we had already given staff a preliminary date that when we expected to open so um, we'll open with as many or um, and I feel like we're going to be uh, there's quite a few people waiting to come so they may not you know sign up for this Monday but within the next couple of weeks uh, more staff members will be bringing their children so we've like uh, Brandy said April 1st we look to be about 80 percent full you all set Mrs. Mr. Hatem I guess one not. other Mr. LaMontagne please is any faculty member exempt because they don't live in Massachusetts no not at all that would be most of the staff yeah anything else Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Moving back to the regular order of business, marketing strategy, Superintendent. So, um, I'm not. Uh, I'd like to table this for now because I have not had time to sit with the soup uh, with the principal to develop our strategies. Um, it's going to take us some time because it's it's more than just. Um, the principal and myself sitting down to develop this we uh, have a, we're putting a committee together to help us uh, design this because it has an impact on a lot of the different uh, uh, programs and um, things that are going on here in the school and we also want to get some expert uh, advice in, de in developing this who someone that has a little more that's done a lot of work around marketing so uh, until we get a chance to do that, I didn't want to bring something that's incomplete and we're not positive it's going to be effective. So uh, I want to bring something we believe will be an effective tool moving forward for marketing and make recommendations, whether it's to, uh, again, post for an in-house person or post for somebody on the outside of the school. But um, once, we have that com uh, once we have that study completed, I'll bring it to the committee. Jill, appreciate a motion to table the marketing strategies to so table moved. matters. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Moving right along. Professional Development Superintendent. Please. So. Uh, let's see. Right. Thank you. So do you have those slides? Okay. I'm um, just going to review our last professional development, which was, was last week, I believe. Uh, it was focused on two different uh, areas. Um, one of the areas was, um, let's see, student, student success plan on, and failures. So, um, and the other one was on a strategic plan. So at this point, I'll go over the student success plan, uh, some of what was uh, talked about at the professional development program and so we utilize this professional development day to uh, talk to the student I mean talk to the staff about student success plans because we had we re required all teachers who had students who were failing to develop a student success plan for those students and uh, I think um, both myself and the principal felt that we needed to give them a little more clarity uh, why we were this expectation was now uh, presented to them and why it was required that they do success plans just so that um, and then ask for feedback from them as well so we want to give them an opportunity to weigh in on some of the philosophies and and some of the work that we're looking to do moving forward around student failures and how we deal with that uh, so we use some of our professional development time this this uh, last Wednesday to uh, review that we spent um, about half our time on that in in the auto, in the uh, auditorium and half the time on uh, the strategic plan, which I'll I'm going to be reporting on uh, my uh, 
goal for this year, which is to develop a strategic plan, which was, uh, I'll go through the, some slides with you on that, which part of it was uh, presented at the uh, professional development on last Wednesday. But if you look at the slide, if you look at the slides, we started the uh, presentation with uh, my particular philosophy on um, on failures and student success plans. Um, so um, I won't go through them, but that slide kind of outlines um, uh, the goal for st uh, for the goal of education. You know, is to uh, for students to continue to learn and uh, talked a little bit about uh, failing students and what it does and how to mo and what and talk we talked about motivating kids and uh, the success plan uh, uh, reflecting uh, that the teacher is going to what they're going to do to continue to support students moving forward uh, after they've missed and that uh, grades aren't forever that grades need to have students need the opportunity to continue to uh, reflect on uh, and go back to uh, making up or doing work that will uh, that they can uh, approach and learn what it is they missed or don't understand so that uh, that the grade will, should always reflect what students know and are able to do and if a student let's say give you an example got a 40 in the first quarter but in the second quarter did make up work did we did a, a new assessment and now knows 80 percent of the material he didn't know in first term that grade should be changed to uh, an 80 that that 40 shouldn't stand forever uh, uh, and if we wanted to do uh, grading regarding responsibility and um, expect meeting expectation that maybe we needed to have a separate grade but that grade needed to be reflective of what students know and able to do moving forward um, and then we talked a little bit about there was a lot of teacher perception about um, uh, the idea of, of uh, success plans and um, what teachers what we were hearing or some of the th um, things that we felt teachers might have had preconceptions about and so we uh, went through that and talked about each one of those bullets that are on there regarding students failures and uh, what that made how that made teachers feel in some cases and had conversations about that uh, and then allowed the we allowed the uh, teachers to uh, turn and talk. Three or four people got together, communicated what they had heard over the first 15, uh, half hour, and then uh, we gave them another half hour to respond and ask questions of myself uh, regarding uh, and make comments about what they heard so that they could express their own feelings so that we had, from that point, we were able to uh, move forward Moving forward, we can uh, look at um, strategies and methods we're going to use in terms of grading. We have a grading committee that's looking at, you know, how we grade students and grading policies, and we're looking at uh, whether we should have a a common uh, grading policy uh, that is adopted, a school policy adopted, uh, but it will be part of our five-year strategic plan moving forward to take a look at. Our grading policies and how we grade students and uh, so that we use that time to reflect on uh, what's going on with students who are failing and how we, we should be addressing that so we had a I think a good uh, give and take and uh, teachers got to really talk about how they felt about our expectations and we got to talk to I think uh, respond to their thinking uh, in the auditorium, which um, I thought uh, went well. Um, and I think that the teachers appreciated being heard, and I appreciated hearing, you know, their thinking. So it helps us as administrators, our whole administrative team was there to continue to do this work in a way that supports students at the highest level we can, uh, particularly those students who are struggling for various reasons. One of the things they ha everyone had to do in their uh, student success plan is first to do an analysis on why the student was failing anywhere from um, having difficulty with the work to struggling emotionally or dealing with something at home that might have impacted their ability to learn in the classroom so um, 
you know, the idea of how do you develop a success plan. First, we have to know what we're dealing with before we can move forward. So that's some of the way we ask teachers to approach it. And so that was part of the professional development. And the other part was on the strategic plan, which uh, I will outline. You'll see as I outline where where we're at with where I'm at with the strategic plan and my goal for this year. Uh, we'll uh, you'll see that we uh, utilize some time in professional development for that as well. Questions for the superintendent? Yes, uh, uh, Doyla. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. I mean, I heard you talking about students um, having to have a certain grade, uh, no, let me think this through. So you were saying that they need to have, they need to pass, that's what you're saying. Yes. And then in a strategy to, for those students that need help, that's, that's why you are explaining and all that. And, yes. And um, so what about the students that don't want to, that they actually don't learn even if you give them the help. What happened with the students? How are you going to pass them? So, um, well, first of all, I believe all students can learn. So we've got to figure out why they're not learning. We have to figure out how we can help them to learn. Um, you know, there's various, there's lots of reasons why students struggle or are having a hard time learning. So we've got a, our job and our responsibility is, and that's what the whole success plan is, uh, is all of the uh, student success plan is all about is first to analyze why is that student not learning? What are the things that are going on, whether it be something going on at home, having difficulty may, with the work? May I interrupt you? Sure. I, I, I don't think I ask the question the right way. There are students that actually don't care. So my question is what happened with those students that actually don't care um, and they're not going to learn more than what, they, yep. what they're here for? Yep. So we have lots of students who fail don't care and that's the reason they don't, they don't learn. But students don't care. There are many, many. We need to know why they don't care. So if a student doesn't care what's going on in their life that we've got to understand and figure how do we motivate that student to want to learn is part of our job. So we can never accept the fact that a student doesn't want to learn. We have, to, we have a responsibility to work with students whether they want to learn or not. Our job is to help them learn, motivate them, and figure out what it is that's causing them not to want to learn. I, um, that's I'm not, not sure. normal. May I, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting to you again. Because uh, I'm not sure you, you got the question. I need to, I want, I'm looking to know what happened to a student. Because you're talking about giving them a grade to pass. Yeah. Why, so my question goes into if a student don't want to learn, and you find out that they don't want to learn, are you going to give them a passing grade? That's my question. What happened to the student? Are we, are we going to continue to have a student taking a seat of, for another student that do want to come here, and they didn't even make it here because somebody else is here and don't want to learn, and we're trying to pass that student somehow? That's my question. Yep. I, I just. Yeah. So first of all, it's not about passing, to be honest with you. It's, and if a student, well, let me just explain. It's if a st students are are not automatically passed. Students have to earn. It's not about passing or not passing. We w we have expectations in terms of students knowing the material and able to do what it is we're trying to in teach them. Whether it be skills or whether it be knowledge, whether it be whatever the materials the content area we're trying to teach them, they need to be able to know and be able to do what it is we're trying to teach them. Now, if they if they don't reach competency in these areas, we're not going to automatically pass them. The, what we're going to do is figure out how do we help them so they do pass and there's no time. What I'm saying is there's no time limit. Whether If they got a 40 to four, first quarter and then they by the second quarter, they know what they didn't know in that first quarter. We need to change the grade because it's about what it is they know and able to do that we always want to measure. If a student doesn't want to learn and is refusing to learn, then we work with the student through guidance, through all kinds of support help. It might be an ELL student, might be a special ed student that has all kinds of plans. So we, that the point is, all 
any student that doesn't want to learn, we've got to work with them to motivate them to want to learn. And that's just not acceptable in terms of, and once the students get here, by law, we can't just tell kids that we can't throw students out or we can't expel students because that's not acceptable. It's the law. Because the law doesn't allow us to do that, number one. And the other thing is, my belief, and I say this all the time, if a student comes here, they are our responsibility and our students to teach not to get rid of, but to work with them and figure out every student we have to figure out a way to teach them and help them learn what it is we want them to learn. I don't want to see, I don't want to throw any student out. I don't want to send any student back to Lawrence. I want to work with every one of those students. They, I feel like they're our students, they're our responsibility. We accepted them, so we have a responsibility to do everything in our power to help that student learn because that student is going to be an adult someday and he's going to be a, one of our citizens. And if we can teach them and uh, help them gain skills and knowledge, they're going to go out and be successful. We want that for every single student, no matter what their challenges are, because a lot of our students are struggling with a lot of um, issues at home and a lot of things that they're having difficulties with that we've got to help them. We've got to help every single one of our students. And that's why I convey to every teacher, I convey that to everybody that works at Greater Lawrence Tech. We're a family, and it's our responsibility to educate our kids not to quit on kids. We should never quit on a single student. If we quit on them, they're going to quit on themselves. How can we quit on them? If we got, we do what we got to do. No student, I'm not going to quit on any student. If they don't want to learn, I'm going to. We need to figure out how to help them deal with whatever is causing the problem that they don't want to learn. And it's easy to say, absolutely. And does does every single student learn? Not always, but we don't want to quit on them. We don't want to give up. We'll keep working at it as long as they're our student. We'll keep working at it. Uh, anything further? Okay, moving on, Superintendent. Uh, new programs, aviation, child care, and programming web development. You gonna fill us in on those? So uh, the three programs that we're working on now, aviation, uh, all of those programs, we're working on Part B. Part B is due to the Department of Education on uh, Friday. And uh, we are in actually very good shape in, in meeting the, um, the standards that are required for Part B. Um, in fact, we had tonight, and one of those requirements is to have a advisory meeting. So tonight I think it was, um, let's see, one of the programs, programming was a uh, meeting tonight, and uh, uh, early, uh, it's either next week, I mean next tomorrow, uh, Thursday I think, is early childhood advisories meeting. And then aviation, we had part of that meeting today, we had the uh, FAA in today to meet with us, three people from uh, the state FAA to meet with us today to go over and talk about what the criteria is and uh, uh, for uh, to get the program certified by FAA, which are very similar to the ones for the Department of Education. We have the consultant uh, for, uh, for aviation um, from um, the school out in Westfield who's been working with us. So we've met, we're pretty much, uh, there's about 15 different areas and standards we are required to uh, complete in order to get approval. And in each of those programs, we're in pretty good shape. I feel confident that all three programs should pass Part B. And that would then, uh, next last part would be for them to visit the school and look at the space we're gonna run the programs, which would happen in the spring. Uh, sometime in uh, May. Uh, so, but I, th I think we're in pretty good shape for all the programs. Uh, everything from developing curriculum to purchasing and having equipment in place uh, for the spring, everything uh, looks good at this point for a go on all three programs. Um, questions for the superintendent? Vivian? Superintendent, um, do you mind providing me an update in regards to the hangar space? Um, I received a phone call from the director of the airport regarding some concerns, which I've tried to reach out to you to kind of touch base on that. Um, so I just wanted to make sure if anything has changed from our last meeting um, visiting the airport. So, um 
there was the hangar that was for sale at the airport we made an offer to the gentleman out at the airport also asked to be on the uh, airport commission's next meeting uh, because they have to vote and approve us purchasing a hangar um, since then um, the other part is I've turned it over to our attorneys to determine what the if there are any state regulations or laws that prevent us from purchasing a, the hangar out there or purchasing another building uh, if there needs to be any legislation to approve that um, so I'm still waiting I called him again today but he didn't return my call um, waiting for the uh, response on that but we have made an offer uh, on that hangar uh, since then uh, the uh, manager of the airport did call me and asked me if I would uh, reach out to uh, the gentleman who owns, who wants to build a hangar out there, who wanted to partner with us to see if he was still interested. Uh, he would like to see us uh, pursue that partnership. I called the gentleman at least four or five times. He has not returned my call. I called uh, Francisco, the manager. Uh, out at the airport and uh, informed them that the gentleman was not returning my calls if he had any um, influence in communicating with them so I could communicate and see if he's in you know where his interest lies before we make a final uh, determination on the purchase of the uh, hangar hasn't returned my call no one's returned my calls yet at that point so at this point I I'm going to wait for once we know the uh, uh, answer from the attorney, which I'll reach out to him again tomorrow on the final purchasing of the uh, hangar that's available. I will, um, if there's no state law that prevents us from purchasing that, uh, then what I would do is uh, move forward with the commission. And uh, I've asked to be on the agenda to purchase the hangar. I would move forward with purchasing that hangar. Uh, I don't want to wait on somebody that's either not ready to do their project or not responding uh, in a way that's just going to make it difficult moving forward. I don't want to get caught in something that's going to derail our opportunity. So what's available is the hangar, so I would continue to pursue that. The same hangar we went to see? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything further? Mr. Hatem? Mr. Hatem? <laughs> Mr. Lavoy, if this hangar falls through, I just want to confirm that this will not affect any other sh existing shops in this building if we have to bring this into this school? No, it won't have any impact on anybody. We're also building a hangar here at the school, so it's part of the uh, three projects that we're uh, pursuing. The architect is doing some drawings for us, uh, and um, so we need a hangar here, and we also need one out at the airport. So. It won't have an impact. We don't really need the hangar at the airport for another year, a year from September, uh, although there'll be some work that needs to be done to that existing one. But rarely does a hangar become available. That's a rare situation. And this, so we, we really need to take advantage of this opportunity because it may never come again. Uh, we may never get the opportunity to get a hangar out there if we miss out on this particular one. And, and it's actually a, it's in a nice location and it's also it's about 3,000 square feet which is a perfect size for what we need uh, to do what we want to do out there uh, so and it's at a reasonable cost it was on the market for 320 I tried to see if he would donate it to us but he wasn't interested in that <laughs> uh, he had uh, he had already had an offer for 275,000 so we offered him 300 and he took it uh, so now, but we got to move quickly because he's anxious to get this thing sold. Um, that's why I want to get back on track with the, uh, but again, we can't actually purchase it till the airport commission approves us purchasing it because uh, they have to approve any owners of the, any hangers out at the airport. So that's why I asked to be on the March agenda at the, uh, uh, for the airport commission. You all set, Mr. Uh, Zoila? Yes. Uh, so these three programs, we already had the child care with a director, which is the lady that was here, Randy Carpenter, and we have a start date of 313, right? 
and we also have a handbook, and we're in the process of doing a policy. Uh, how about the other ones? Can we have some details of that, the, what I just... Um, program? Uh, yes. The program? Uh, who's who's going to be in charge when it's the start day? Um, yep and how are we working on the policies for those? Yeah. So all three of these programs won't start until September and Julie. The child care center is opening now only f not as an educational program, but just as a service for our teachers. It opened in September as an early childhood education program. So it'll have different rules and the handbook will be totally different. This handbook only is utilized for the child care center. Under Chapter 74, there'll be totally different policies and regulations. They'll be the same as every other shop in terms of our policies. But this only is for uh, getting us through until then, except for there will be, as long as we're going to continue to take students in, there'll still be some alignment of this policy book with the Chapter 74 policies that we'll have to um, uh, work on between now and September and need to be approved by the Department of Ed. So that will also be going into the Department of Ed as one of the requirements. Um, so, but the third program, programming, uh, the space, we have a space to put that in for our ninth grade program. So next year, we have all our spaces designated where the ninth grade exploratory programs will be. I'll be doing a report at the next meeting. I think it's on the agenda on space on uh, for all moving, f opening up next school year all the additional space we need for classrooms and for all the shops, outlining and going over that with the committee. I'll have that ready for you at the next school committee meeting. Uh, but we do have space for the to open up all three programs, including programming. Programming is meeting tonight, the advisory is meeting tonight, which is a requirement of the Part B. Um, so we have a committee put together. The curriculum's all uh, done and written. Uh, all the standards we need is completed. All that there's all those checklists for that particular program is all ready to go. We even have an instructor. Well, we know we have the possibility of an instructor, I should say. We've posted it. We have an instructor that applied that is licensed, so we feel good about that. Um, also, in uh, child care, we do have an applicant for that, for the uh, ninth grade teacher. And aviation, we actually have one instructor that applied uh, as well. That person doesn't have a Chapter 4 license yet, but they can be put on a waiver. So we're actually looking pretty good for all the programs, including programming. Uh, so we're in good shape for all those programs to open up next September. Awesome. Anything further? Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, superintendent uh, evaluation timeline, John. Yes, yep, that's you, buddy. You're the superintendent. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so my um, uh, goal for this year was to develop a strategic, a five-year strategic plan. So at this time, I'm going to uh, give you an updated report on where I'm at with that with that process. Um, so you can see what we've done and what we still have left to do. It's a extensive, long, lot of work program. Program that has a lot to it, a lot of work to it, and trying to enco encompass our total community, both inside the school and outside the school, in this process. So I'm going to kind of go through the process with you at this time, so you can see kind of what I've done and what I haven't done. I'm going to go through some of the slides pretty quickly because it's, it's lengthy. I think there's 25 slides. So I'll try not to, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on every slide, but certain slides I'll spend a little more time on so you have a better picture of what's been done already and kind of the direction we're going in with the strategic plan. All right, so the strategic plan. Excuse me one second. Mrs. Fitzgerald, sorry, John. Mrs. Be Fitzgerald. Before we start, um, I wondering how many people are have been involved in this strategic plan yep. so there's been a, quite a few people already involved in it but there's going to be um, hundreds of people involved in it before it's completed so you, you can see the process and how everyone gets to participate Thank you. well 
So the strategic plan um, starts off. The, the, the plan itself will probably have two or three pages of text uh, to start the plan off before it gets into details uh, with all the focus areas. But of course, we start off with our mission statement, which is our school's mission statement, our school vision, and our core values. They're all part of the strategic plan, so they align both to our school improvement plan and to our uh, work that we've done around accreditation and the work that the, that the whole faculty and the school has done in the past. So that doesn't get changed. So we have we utilize that as our starting point for the five-year strategic plan as the foundation of what is critical and important to our school. Um, then we have the uh, vision of reality. Um, so the, uh, the foundation, the vision statement, and the uh, GLTS core values will be reflected in the overarching goals of each focus area. So the focus areas, we have nine focus areas that this strategic plan is going to develop uh, uh, where we are we starting off or where are we today in these focus areas and where do we want to be five years from now or where do we need to go five years from now, from now? Uh, so it's going to take a lot of research and work to look at you know in each of these areas where um, the world is going and education is going and, and a lot of the things that are critical to who we are as a school uh, and the work that we've done the last few years and how that has to progress moving forward. So the uh, areas that we'll be working on is leadership and governance, uh, curriculum, instruction and assessment, teacher recruitment, teacher retention, student support, increasing student access, finance and asset management, workforce development, school culture and climate. So you'll see, you can see in there, there just hits about every critical and important issue facing the school and a lot of work that we've already accomplished trying to move that work for, uh, further, but also uh, how we're going to implement some of the work we've already done over the next five years so that, uh, that it brings meaning to the hard work that uh, it's been accomplished in the past so we're not letting go of the, the work that we did in the past we're embracing it and implementing some of it in our five-year strategic plan, and that'll be outlined in the plan itself. Uh, so um, each of the areas I outline, just uh, some samples of some of the things we'll cover within those different focus areas. I won't go through each of them tonight, but you can take a look at it, and you'll see it's just a small outline of the work that's going to be done in each of those area, areas. So, um, so just to, well I'll just uh, just give an example in governance and leadership uh, the governance body that oversees school policies budgeting operations made up of school committee superintendent advisory council and administrative leadership team examples of responsibility that fall under the umbrella of governance and leadership is determination of policies outlined in the student and staff handbooks hiring practices compliance with federal and state laws so these are all things we're going to look at uh, as we start to develop our plan and and uh, make decisions about the future, but for each focus area, uh, this a lot of the uh, slides you're seeing I uh, went through with our administrative team already and the faculty as well. So um, there's uh, a slide for each one of the focus areas. So it takes us to uh, what has happened so far. So what's the work that's happened so far? On uh, February 16th, I did a presentation to the administrative team, soliciting feedback from them on, uh, on the strategic plan moving forward and, um, and also did some work assigning them some, I assigned the administrative, uh, each administrator to co-chair one of the focus areas so for each focus area, there will be a co-chair. Uh, there's uh, co-chairs. One is an administrator, one is a staff member. So um, S Susan and I um, uh, assign the administrators, the principal, and we are going to look at tomorrow. We've had, well, we'll go through this, but I have applicants who want to co-chair, faculty members who want to co-chair uh, these particular focus area that the principal and I look at and assign them to different focus area. 
uh, on three on March first, did a presentation to the faculty. Did approximately, I think, about six slides to the faculty regarding the um, a strategic plan. Uh, and uh, as part of our work on our professional development day last Wednesday, uh, we used some of that time to solicit solicited solicited feedback from each collaborative planning time group. So the CPT groups got together and we gave them a activity to do uh, on the strategic focus area priorities. We collected the work that they did at the end of the uh, uh, professional development day, which will be uh, the each of the committees uh, will be utilizing. Um, We filtered faculty input data by focus area and designated priorities distributed to the administrative co-chairs. So the work that the faculty did on that day, uh, we pulled all that information together, all that data together, and, and have um, uh, shared that data with the administrative co-chairs of each of the focus area. We've posted a job for staff co-chairs for each focus area committee, which the committee approved at our last meeting. Uh, we've reviewed those applications. As I said, tomorrow we'll make selections as who will be the other co-chair of each of the committee to work with this, with each of the administrators. Currently soliciting uh, ideas on how to engage our sending community members. Met with, uh, we've met with the Director of Special Education, Director of ERL Department, and Assistant Principal for Discipline. <laughs> Each of these have different um, committees, uh, uh, fact, uh, parent committees, and other members who participate in some of their, uh, their uh, specific committees. So we met with them to talk about what kind of, uh, how we could um, reach out to their, the people that they work closely with uh, from members of our uh, parent groups. Um, we're, uh, oops. Um, uh, we have upcoming uh, meetings with the chairs of the BIPOC committee, which I think is tomorrow, and all the CT administrators and director of guidance in the mission. We still haven't met yet, but we will be meeting with them also, so solicit ideas of how to reach out to our uh, greater community. Uh, outline the work going forward. So the week of 313 committee chair, <coughs> excuse me, committee co-chairs uh, will be setting up initial meetings. The week of 313 committee chairs make contact with staff who have already expressed interest in sitting on a particular committee and recruit additional members. A link to a sign-up sheet will be also posted in the Reggie Spotlight. The members uh, uh, for all new uh, staff members, they'll be uh, also in the newsletter. Uh, we will send in a separate email and postings around the building to solicit members to participate, other staff members to par participate on the committee. On our committee, we put out some documents at professional development to solicit people to participate on the different committees as well, depending on where their focus area interest lied, lies. Uh, on the week of 3.20, co-chairs share staff feedback and, uh, with committee members. Committees meet for the, the first time, so all the co-chairs will uh, schedule a meeting to meet with the people who are interested in being part of their committee. On 3.24, discussions regarding strategic plan, uh, I will uh, present our legislative breakfast on the 24th when our legislators come in to talk a little bit about the strategic plan and what direction we're going uh, uh, with the strategic plan on March 28th. Uh, myself and the principal will facilitate a discussion on the strategic plan at the school council meeting, getting preliminary input. On April 4th, strategic plan workshop at the school committee. So on April 4th, I'm going to do a, a workshop with uh, uh, the school committee to get your input on particularly on governance and leadership, which is uh, the area in which you oversee and uh, promote the school and uh, do policy. So uh, what should that work look like over the next five years? So I'll, put a, I'll be putting a small program together so I can solicit your input and give you an opportunity to uh, give me feedback on that and then see um, if you're interested uh, in, 
bring me feedback and any of the other focus series as well. So we'll do some work on our, our meeting of April 4th. Um, throughout April, the committee develops a basic overview of their work to present in two committee Zoom meetings to be held on April 11th. And uh, so we're going to be doing Zoom meetings, to, which will be uh, looking for our parents and other members of the community to participate in. Um, we will develop, the committee develops a few key questions to put in a survey to be distributed via the Reggie Home Happenings, which is our Reggie newsletter, and email to the community from myself, and in a chat during the Zoom meetings, questions that we'll put out to the, those people who are, will be attending the Zoom meeting. So a specific population to be targeted for communication and so on and advisory council members, current families, prospective families, students, and alumni will be sent out communication to all our alumni regarding the Zoom meeting to get their feedback as well. Then on from April through May 10th, the committee will meet regularly, committee arrange one public meeting for any staff who would like to provide feedback. May 11th committee submit their work to myself and uh, including one to two sentence, include one to two sentence they would like to include in a theory of action. And on May 12th through the 20th, uh, I will respond to the committee's recommendations and compose a theory of action for chance review to ensure it exactly reflects the work they have done. Um, and so that kind of outlines where we're going moving forward. Uh, I just gave you some example of what the, uh, some of the focus area work will look like. So this one is uh, built on uh, this sample uh, that I uh, shared with uh, the administrative team and then some members of the different committees. So uh, just uh, a small example of some of the work that they'll be doing is, so increase access, which is, uh, the goal, so they, in each of the committees, will start off by developing a goal statement. Uh, so the goal statement should explicitly reflect some of the key elements of the school vision and the core values. Uh, to, in this case, uh, we have uh, on this particular goal statement is to increase student access to Greater Lawrence Technical School in order to provide greater opportunities for students within our sending districts. Core strategies, expand and renovate the physical. So these are some strategies regarding the goal that, um, that I put in there. Um, expand and renovate the physical plant was one of the core strategies and the objectives was to develop a marketing plan to educate the community about the core strategy, complete a feasibility study to identify industry needs and community support, file an NSBA letter of interest for additional funding, secure city and town approvals, increase faculty square footage, uh, I mean facility square footage in order to support existing programs, expansion and new program and implementation, and accept more students to all programs. So it just gives you an outline. That's only in specific to uh, giving more students ac access to the uh, school. And so the expected outcomes uh, that they'll work on is, in this case, we did do a feasibility study, architect complete within the first two years, community meetings, MSBA letter of interest, necessary funding and school committee and approval, marketing outreach plans, additional building and expansion of current buildings, and the outcome is a 15% growth in student population was one of the outcomes of it. Um, and additional strategies are needed as necessary. Um, goal statement should explicitly reflect at least some of the key elements of the school vision and core values. Um, I think I gave you that already. And then so, um, so in the final slide, a, a superintendent will bring the strategic plan to the school committee for a vote. So that just kind of outlines some of the work that's happening and some of the work that needs to still happen. So still a lot of work to happen and a lot of work will be uh, committee work in everybody in the building and outside the building have opportunities to weigh in on the strategic plan. Questions for the superintendent? Okay, John, enrollment procedure after acceptance? So you should. I think uh, I, um, I asked the uh, director of uh, admissions, guidance admissions, to provide you with uh, the, the documents uh, just so you're aware of what our, um, uh, let me see. 
our procedures are once uh, students are accepted. And uh, you can take some time, look at it, and if you'd like to respond to it at the next meeting, we can respond to it at our next meeting. I know you just got some of the documents tonight, so um, any uh, we can have more discussions about it. But I thought it's important for you to understand because you've had the committees had questions often on this, and uh, I thought it was important for you to read some of the letters and communication that goes on uh, to parents uh, after we do the acceptances. Sure, Zyla. You have a microphone, please. Thank you. So I was looking at the letters. Um, and one, I mean, I would like to see the director here. Mm -hmm. um, every time something like this is presented, like we have the other ladies that were here, that was nice. Um, so the expectation is that she comes and present these things. At least. Yeah, I, I, uh, I asked her to come next week rather I than heard, this week. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's, that's good. So hopefully she'll be here next week. Next meeting. Next, next meeting. meeting. So in the one where um, the student is accepted, I know it says, in, there's a sentence that says they have 10 days to return, you know, to respond. Or otherwise, they're gonna be taken, that, that seat is gonna, gonna be taken, but I didn't see any date of the acceptance. So again, I wish she is here to answer, un unless you know the answer. I guess I missed the question on what was the question. What was the question? So the letter, that shows that the student has been accepted, yeah. the first one. Yeah. It says, there's a sentence within the letter that says you had 10 days to respond. Correct. Or to, to provide the required documentation. Yes. Otherwise, they're going to be taken. That, that right. acceptance is gonna be taken exactly. Yeah. But it's not a date, so I don't know if it's, it was um, left out, or there's not a date on the letter. Yeah. So how they yeah. know Let's see. Go ahead. So, okay. Where, where are we here now? Sue? Sue, did you have a question? An answer, I mean? Excuse me, John. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Superintendent was probably going to say that the reason why there's not a date yet is that, like, once it's the once that the, the, they determine the actual date that they're going out to, it would there would actually be a, there would absolutely be a date on that. Yes. They will all be dated, right? Yeah, she didn't give you an example on it, no. Yeah. 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 And I didn't have her come because I thought you would need some time to review it more, and then she could be here once okay. you've had an opportunity to do that. Yeah. Okay. This time, the chair accepts the motion to table this matter to table matters. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, admission report is in your packet, ladies and gentlemen. Did the Reggie, little Reggies. Uh, report from committees, non district committee priorities, policies. We need a vote. Uh, Chair, I appreciate a motion on section B, BDG school attorney. Have a motion on that, please? So moved. Discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? New business. I see no table matters here. Personnel consideration. Um, resignations. Non leave of absence. Social, uh, social studies instructor on a parental leave effective February 27th of June 20th, 2023. No retirements. Appointment of Ms. Callie LaChapelle, a PT uh, medical secretary. Office Assistant, effective February 14th, 2023. Mr. Alex Torres, LTS, uh, for <clears throat> Social Studies, effective uh, February 14th, 2023. The following, ladies and gentlemen, are job postings. It will need to be voted on. John, want to take uh, take the first uh, the first two, please, because they're lengthy. The, uh, so the, first, yeah, the athletic, I'm sorry, yep. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Athletic and the guidance admission, please. Yeah, so the first one is uh, job posting for athletic. This is a uh, uh, posting that we do every year. Um, it's an annual position. Athletic rental security. Oh, I'm sorry. Athletic, 
Athletic rental security field maintenance will work during the evening to assure the fields are only used by organizations that have authorization to be utilizing the facility, as well as maintaining, upkeeping property, and assist rental organizations Monday through Friday, 5.30 to 9.30. Uh, 20 hours a week, $40 an hour annual position. And this person uh, does mostly maintaining when there are issues that are happening when people are utilizing the field and also doing an inspection at the end of uh, each after the uh, facilities uh, rentals are done, uh, going around and checking the facilities to see if there was any damage because anyone that utilizes the field has a responsibility to um, uh, maintain and keep the field in good order and if they don't then um, we have it in every contract that we can charge them for any damage so we go around and check that at the end of every at the end uh, of every evening to see if there's any damage and then also that person is responsible to work with the facility uh, director to ensure that something that uh, things are repaired sometimes that person will do it themselves uh, whenever possible okay Guidance and admission specialist? Guidance and admission specialist, one year position to provide uh, administrative support to the admissions and guidance department with primary responsibility for admissions and enrollment process per uh, contract. Uh, this is a replacement position. Chair will accept the motion to accept those. Uh, Chair will accept the motion to accept those. So moved. Have a second? Second. Mr. Cirillo? No, nope. That's every year. Every we have that every year. Every we we posted it every season in the spring and in the fall. Vivian. Um, okay, so just to gain clarity, because as I'm hearing you read this position, I'm like, oh, I thought we had someone already that handles that. So when you say. Uh, so is it a seasonal position then? And is that the reason why it's considered annual as opposed to a replacement? Yeah, so it is. We do have someone that's done it, and but we still post it. We still post it every season. We're required to. We should. We're required to post it every season because someone else might be interested. It's not a full year position. Mrs. Fitzgerald. At the present time, is this an unfilled position? Like we had somebody, but didn't they leave? Or are That's they still a that was a different position. This is they only they only work twenty hours a week. Okay. They work weekends and uh, a total of twenty, but we have someone on security um, every night and throughout the whole weekend. Are you looking for this to be an in-house position? Yes. All right. Thank you. Anything further? All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Hey, John, math instructor, environmental Math system. instructor, CBA, effective August 2023, replacement position. Environmental science instructor, teacher, CBA, effective 2023-24. This is a new position. One more, please, and then we'll do the last And then one. HVAC instructor, posting for two teachers currently on waivers, annual position. Do you accept the motion? So moved. A little second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Continue, sir. Electrical instructor posting two teachers currently on waivers. These are annual positions. Plumbing instructor posting for two teachers currently on waivers, annual position. Horticulture instructor, two postings for two teachers currently on waivers, annual positions. Chair, accept the motion. So moved. How about a second? Second? Okay. Uh, comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Future agenda items, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there will be a need for an executive session for the purpose of collective bargaining uh, negotiations. Can I have a motion on that, please? Second. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Could you call the roll when you have a moment, please? I'm a Mr. Yes, Slough? By the way. Mr. Hayden? Yes. Mr. Cirillo? Yes. Ms. Marmel? Ms. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. LaMontagne? Yes, we will be coming back to, uh, to adjourn.
it's not working. No. Oh. No, Yes, yeah, I haven't signed off okay, on it yet. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening.